my perspective, the biggest impact for convergence, uh, reflecting my uh, many years of experiences in the pharmaceutical industry, is the uh, new opportunities in accelerating drug discovery and development uh, by the convergence of information technology, nanotechnology, and biotechnology, and to the extent that it's applied to neuroscience uh, diseases, uh, it could also have the in intersection with the cognitive sciences. Uh, I think in the near term, we are very excited about the role of rational computer-aided drug design in uh, designing a next generation of anti-cancer therapeutics that will have uh, significant advantages over the best therapeutics available today. Well, uh, cancer therapies and therapies in general are quite often trade-offs between benefits and, uh, and, and problems or side effects or adverse events. And uh, when the benefits significantly outweigh the disadvantages, then those uh, products are approved by the Food and Drug Administration. And uh, conversely, when it's the other way around, uh, they're uh, declined, uh, they're rejected. And uh, so even the ones that make it to market have uh, issues and problems and side effects. And as we advance our knowledge of biology and as better tools emerge, we're able to dial out some of those uh, defects and preserve the desirable properties of these medicines. Uh, further out, I think the convergence between uh, treatment of diseases, which is what we're talking about in the case of pharmaceuticals, and the whole idea of uh, wellness and using the array of information for uh, patients to take better care of themselves, uh, ultimately having a very big and positive effect on health care and, and, and also the productivity of an aging workforce. Uh, I think that's going to be a transformational impact on society. Sure. Exactly. And, and we should recognize that we are in a knowledge economy. And obviously the mind and the brain are central to the knowledge economy. And so especially advances in uh, uh, um, combating neurodegenerative diseases, allowing knowledge-based workers to remain engaged and productive uh, into uh, a much uh, longer in their uh, lifespan is a key part of our strategy as a society for uh, uh, economic uh, sustainability. That is uh, uh, the issue of inter communication or interdisciplinary research and having common language and common ground for collaboration, that's a very important issue. Uh, even the jargon and the languages, uh, language used by uh, various research fields are specific to that field and you can have one word meaning one thing in one, one field but it's something totally different in another field and, and that may lead to misunderstanding and, and lost opportunities and, and delays. Um, having uh, platforms, uh, and this is where information technology and tools come into play, that allow a common platform for collaboration uh, through uh, digital technologies and, and smartphones and, and social media and so on. Uh, I think uh, those are some of the new and emerging ways in which uh, people from different uh, disciplines can collaborate. That's right. I think the whole point of interdisciplinary collaboration is that uh, the different uh, parties or collaborators bring something relatively you know, unique to the table. It, it's not that everyone has to become an expert in everything. Right? So I think you want to preserve that depth and knowledge of a particular uh, domain, but allow those experts to collaborate in a productive manner. For um, pretty much my entire professional life, uh, whether it was in academia or in industry, or for that matter when I worked for the National Science Foundation, uh, as the founding uh, director of the cyber infrastructure programs here. Uh, it's always been about uh, research, so I've lived my entire professional life in research. And one thing I keep telling myself about research is it's a form of investment. So while I know we are in very difficult uh, financial constraints and have to make difficult decisions, uh, we, we as a nation are, are blessed with the uh, support and confidence of our fellow citizens of the world who want to lend us money at incredibly low rates. <laughs> and, and so that's a vote of confidence in our unique strengths. And, and, and the fact that the cost of, 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 of capital is so low for us relative to anywhere else in the world and yet we are capable of doing amazing research, uh, which is an investment into the future. My gut feeling is the return on, on that investment will be very, very significant at a time when the cost of, of those investment dollars are relatively low for us. So in that sense, I'm very optimistic that we can do great things in the next 10, 20 years.